there, hello there. Gather round, gather round. Today, we're going to tell you a story. A story about Christopher Colombo and America Zuski. America Zuski was the guy, obviously, who's named America. Well, the continents are named after him. And both, basically, both of these guys, Christopher Colombo, Christopher Columbus, or, and America Zuski, were basically debating on what these land masses were. A couple years ago, 500 years, let's just say, you know, 14, er, late 1400s, early 1500s, right? They were both Italian explorers. They spoke different dialects of Italian. Uh, America Zuski was actually born in the Vietnamese Republic, and I believe Christopher Colombo was born in the Genevan, I, I don't remember, Republic. But basically, they were both Italians, but they worked for the Crown of Castile. And so, as they were they were conquering, they were colonizing. Christopher Columbus wanted to make the um, the Indies the the Indies is what the islands he was he was um, conquering. He wanted to make it into a very Catholic state. He wanted to make it. He wanted them to be servants of God, not servants of of like profit or you know profiting things. Right? America Zuski wanted to make it a very gold intensive state. He wanted to profit. He wanted to make money. So both guys had two different intenses. One of them had a religious goal. The other one had a more economical, if that makes sense. And the economical o overrided the religious goal in the Americas. And it brought a bunch of other people from other continents uh, involuntarily to the Americas, sadly. Now, why am I saying this? Because we don't, we don't tend to, we tend to think about the one guy who conquered the first time, and we don't ever think about the consequences of the second person, America Zuski. And while he was the guy who came up with the ideal that America is a continent, and, but his ideals still live, lived on for those next hundred years or so with um, bringing people involuntarily and making them work, you know, forcing them to work. It's, it's absolutely horrific what he, what he did to the future of the Americas and everything. Uh, Christopher Columbo wanted to make it more European. He didn't really want other people working. He just he wanted to basically make everyone a servant of God, and he would chop off anybody's hands. It didn't matter if they were native or if they were Spanish or he didn't care. Um, and then you got to remember, like America didn't name it after himself. America Zuski did not name it after himself. He named uh, the German typographer got his name. Uh, he was the one who named it, uh, but he was not, Germany didn't exist back then, it was probably the Holy Empire. So some guy from the Holy Empire was a cartographer, and he was the guy who named it America. And they labeled it in South America first, so that's why South Americans identify as Americans more than, let's say, North Americans. Because America was generally referred to as South America before it was labeled as a North America. North America was named months later in the time period. And the United States of America was really named in like 1776, like literally the date of the founding. The Declaration of Independence doesn't state United States of America anywhere, but like a few days later, we sort of identified as Americans. Like, you know, there's a, there's a letter written in the same year as the Declaration of Independence that basically states us as Americans. And so I find this whole thing, this whole naming convention so fascinating that we have names after Christopher Columbus and the America. We don't have anything named after that German photographer who named the whole place America. So it's kind of fascinating to me that um, those two names stuck around, and the Crown of Castile was the one that basically colonized a lot of it. Um, even though I don't speak Spanish, and I don't have a lot of ancestry from Spanish, it's quite interesting to me how the Crown of Castile really changed history in the way they wanted to Two guys disagreed on something. Two Italian explorers who were not from Castile at all changed history. One wanted to make it a Catholic state. The other one wanted to make it a profitable state. The profitable state sort of, but then it became an extraction state, so it really didn't work out very well. The geography was amazing. It was amazing geography, but they really messed up by just draining out all the resources given to Castile. And those economies suffered for many years because of it. And to this day, you can still see the effects of an extortion state where there was not enough time to build a government when you're just extorting money from your population. And it is quite interesting to look at the economies and see what they did in the future, see how these, these people shaped the modern history of the Americas. And um, 
you know, I live in the United States, which is a little bit different. They didn't really extract as much resources. And then once they started doing that, we got independence because we didn't like that ideal. Now, I think it's starting to happen in the United States. I think we're going to start to look more and more like the rest of the Americas because you, 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 you already see it with Canada. They already took a lot of the truckers, you know, the protests, but it's kind of fascinating to me that um, I think we're starting to structurally be like that um, with the, um, because there's no like incentive to keep the money around. You just have to spend it. So I, I can see there's no incentive to keep money anymore. <laughs> you just have to spend it and invest it and hope it works out for the best, I guess. Um, do you like, do you guys like my lights? I, I got new lights for my room, this new light. Do you guys like the light? Uh, comment below if you like the light. Uh, if not, I am, I am, it's, I am planning to change out the light or whatever. I don't, I don't really care. I don't really care your opinions, but yeah, you can comment whatever you want. Um, but yeah, this, the history behind it is just so fascinating. And the fact we celebrate this guy who I barely knew, even in school, he was kind of vague. He just sailed the ocean blue at seven in, you know, 1492, kind of a vague story there. And, you know, he, he was very brave. I have to give him credit. He was very brave. He treated people with disrespect equally. I mean, he treated everyone pretty poorly. Even his son was treated pretty poorly under his, his watch. But, you know, at least you can kind of understand, like, the bravery of the, the Europeans. Uh, I think that's why we celebrate him. It's more about his bravery more than the, the actions he did. And I, I think that shows this... If it wasn't for bravery of other people, I would not be here. Uh, most of us would not be here without the bravery of other people. And whether that is a good or bad thing remains to be seen throughout history. Uh, history is written by the victors. And it is going to be very interesting in the future to see this debate on whether we want to celebrate this guy or not. And I, I just find this so... F I, I don't know. I find the history of this, this thing so fascinating, this, this Columbus Day... Uh, always on it's normally on a Monday. I don't know why normally on a Monday. I just, I just find it fascinating. So I, I would like uh, everyone to debate whether who, who is right. Was it, do you like the extortionist method or do you like the religious method? I mean, I don't like either, but you know, whatever, which one would you rather have? What, what, what debate would you rather have? They debated in their time frame what they wanted. Now it is up for you guys to debate the comment section, even though we're living in modern times, we don't really have any of those anymore. Um, what would you rather, would you rather like? Anyway, you are someone and I am someone else. And thank you for being on this journey with me across the time frame, talking about time.